Let me shed some light on this for you. Let there be light. Blinded by the light. Just some light puns. Lighten up. Nowadays, everybody is on camera a lot more than they used to be. We now have meetings, interviews, even parties over Zoom. And we live stream our concerts, workshops, conferences, games, you name it. Anything that was done in person is now done over a phone, tablet, or computer screen. Part of looking professional in the new norm involves knowing a little bit about lighting. And let's face it, lighting can be tough. This video is going to talk about lighting and give you the tools you need to light yourself in an affordable and easy way that makes you look professional. We'll talk about three different types of lights and how to set them up, as well as some info about lighting in general that should help you get the look that you want. Then we're going to actually walk through how I set up the light for this video. And we'll talk about the decision making process that I went through. If you have any questions or advice for other viewers, let us know in the comments. Good lighting is hardly ever noticed, but bad lighting will always stick out like a sore thumb. So first, let's talk about what not to do. Number one, don't put your main light source behind you. I can't stress this one enough. You may have the most beautiful view outside your window, but no one cares if they can't see your face. With such a bright light behind you, only your silhouette is visible on camera. Number two, don't light everything from straight in front of you. When everything is lit evenly from the front, you can lose a lot of depth from your subject to your background, and it makes it hard to focus on you. It's distracting because there's too much to look at. And don't use too much light. If your scene is lit too heavily, you'll lose a lot of contrast, and you risk overexposing your subject and overlighting your background. This means you can't see the person on camera and they just turn into a bright blob. Overlighting your background means that you lose any separation from your subject and background. Again, this can get distracting. And the fourth one, don't use too little light. This one should be obvious. If you don't have enough light, how are we gonna be able to see you? You might as well be shooting in a closet. Let's get something straight. I am not about spending money. We're gonna create professional looking lighting without breaking the bank. With a basic understanding of lights, you can use cheaper lighting solutions, AKA the lights you already have, to make a professional lighting setup. We won't be using really expensive lights for this setup, and the same principles will apply across the board. There are three main types of lights that'll help you get set up. Number one is a key light. This is going to be your main light source. Number two is a fill light. This will help manage the shadows that are cast by the key light. And number three, a hair light. This light helps separate you from the background. The key light is typically placed just to one side of the camera so that the light wraps slightly around the face but still casts a little bit of shadow. Remember, shadows aren't bad. They're just what give an object its shape. To manage our shadow, we'll use a fill light on the opposite side of the camera at a much lower intensity. This will help us not look too dramatic and make sure that we don't lose detail on the shadow side of our subject. The hair light will go behind our subject and it'll illuminate the edges of the subject's hair, giving them a nice contour that defines them from the background. Another thing to know is color temperature. Color temperature is on a scale denoted with Kelvins that describes the color of light. On the lower end of the spectrum, we have an orangey red at about 1000 Kelvin. This is the color of a lit candle. And at the higher end of the spectrum, we have a blue color at 10,000 Kelvin. It's like the color of a blue sky. Daylight or a whiter direct sunlight usually falls around 5,000 Kelvin. And an incandescent or a yellowy indoor light falls at around 2,800. So really, all you need to know about this is that there's different color temperature between outdoor and indoor light. Outdoor is usually a whiter or a bluer light. Indoor is usually yellower. You can buy lights in either color, but try to keep the lighting temperature balanced for a more natural look. Okay, so now let's talk about some more general lighting characteristics. 
that'll help you identify the right lighting look for you. First off, let's talk about soft and hard light. Hard lights have strong shadows. This lighting is super moody and dramatic. Hard lighting is popular in horror or film noir, but it's probably not what you're looking for for your live stream or Zoom meeting. Hard lighting is also not incredibly flattering and it'll cast strong shadows and make facial features appear much more angular. Now, soft lighting, on the other hand, casts softer shadows or no shadow at all. It tends to allow the light to wrap around the subject and it's much more flattering look. So now we're ready to start actually setting up a scene. The first thing that you want to do when you walk into a room where you're going to be on camera, whether it's for an interview, a Zoom meeting, a podcast, live stream, whatever, it's to find your lighting motivation. And I don't mean finding motivation to set up lighting. That can be hard. I know. Motivation simply refers to what light sources already exist. It's easier to find an already existing light source that you can augment with other lights rather than trying to create good lighting out of nothing. It'll end up giving you a much more natural look if you use what your location is already providing. This can be a window, a lamp, a light fixture. As long as it's a pre-existing light source, you're good to go. For me, in this room, it's the windows along this wall. With all the lights off, this is my main light source. So I wanna position myself so that the main light source is in front of me and to one side. So I've positioned my desk in between these two sets of windows, perpendicular to the wall, so that the bigger set of windows is in front of me and the smaller window is behind me. Keep an eye on this small window. It's not my main light source, but it does serve a purpose in the lighting setup, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now that we've identified our lighting motivation and decided on a position, we can start to augment our lighting with additional lights. First up, I'm gonna set up this small LED light on the side. It's on the same side as my lighting motivation. Now, this LED light can let you control color, so I could have it be an incandescent light bulb, but I'm gonna match the color temperature of the color coming in through the windows. So let's set it to daylight. If I put it to the side pointing right at me, the light's gonna be really hard and cast some heavy shadows on my face. So instead, I've turned the light away from me and pointed at the wall next to me. What this does is it allows for the light source to bounce off the wall and diffuse to make a much softer light. If you aren't lucky enough to have a wall right next to you, try moving it further away and putting a white cloth in between you and the light. Or try to put up some foam core or a poster board to bounce the light off just like there was a wall there. Now, we still have shadow on the other side of my face over here. So we're gonna use a fill light on the side opposite of my key to help lessen some of the harsh shadows. So I've got another LED light. I've set it up over here. Let's turn it on. I've turned it away from me and set it to be daylight to match the other light. Luckily, I have another wall over here that's further away, which means that the light bouncing back will be softer, but it'll also be less intense because it has further to travel once it's bounced back to me. This is great because we don't want our fill light to be as strong as our key light. It's simply supposed to fill in some of the shadows from our key light. Now, let's talk about a hair light. So do you remember that window back here behind me? See what it's doing to this side of my hair? It's giving just enough light to help separate me from the background. I got some gray hairs too that are helping with that, but you know. I also have a window shade to soften the light and make it less distracting, but it still gives just enough light to separate me from the background. Now, the background seems a bit dark to me, and you see this side of my shoulder and face need to be separated from the background a bit too. So I'm gonna actually throw another light back there. This is gonna be a practical light. A practical light is any physical light that is visible in the frame that gives off light. This practical light will serve a few different purposes. It'll brighten the background, and it'll provide more of a hair light to separate me from the background. Also, it'll serve as a compositional element in my set. Now, for this practical light, it makes sense for it to be an indoor incandescent light bulb 
and it doesn't look unnatural. So I hope this video will help you next time you're looking to light a subject for your video, your live stream, or even a Zoom meeting. If you have any more tips or advice or questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks.